Yay Networks. Welcome to Greg Luganis is Alive, the podcast that challenges what you think you know. I'm joined today with my friend and manager, Beth Sinman. Hello, hello. I'm I'm muting stuff that's happening in the background. <laughs> <laughs> but hello, hello. I'm glad you're alive. Um, and I have to say, the name of the podcast, like first and foremost. So I want to unpack a little bit with you, like why you're doing a podcast and you know where you're at. Right, right, right. But let's talk about this name for a second. Um, okay, okay. You are Dude. alive. You're very alive. And, and yeah. And so tell me, tell me a little bit about why people might think you're not. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it's like, um, Okay, so I was diagnosed HIV positive in 1988, six months prior to the Olympic Games in 88. And so, you know, if I'm out of the public's eye, that's a question. It's like, I mean, it's almost like every six months I get a message on social media asking, hey, I have a bet with my friend. Are you alive? You know, and, and I just have to laugh, to, you know, laugh. And, you know, I usually respond, uh, no, yeah. <laughs> let me rest in peace, you know, but, you know, just joking around. You do you not know, stop but, it. That, that might be what you want to say, but you don't say that. <laughs> but, you know, it, you, you have to have a sense of humor about yeah. all of that stuff. And when you go to Greg Luganus is, and then it always comes up alive, dead, you know, so, um, God bless Google. You know, it, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was so funny because, like, when I was with the United States Olympian and Paralympian Association, uh, one of the members I was on the board, and one of the members said, "Greg, you really have to address this. You know, there are your obituaries out there." And I'm like, "Oh, please, you know, they, I hear that." So, you know, kind of tongue in cheek. That's that's what uh, you know the reason why the name. Yeah, Greg I, I, I loved it when I heard it, and. I think for me, yes, all of those things came into play, knowing that, you know, that's a, a highly searched phrase, you know, mm -hmm. with your name. Uh, yeah. But one of the things that intrigues me about the name, and then we, we can get off of the name, but it's that talking to you on a more personal level, we find out how really alive you are. You know, you're, uh, but people don't realize, uh, I think because you're in the public eye and you've, you've lived basically your entire life in the public eye, literally from the, the time you were a child, um, yeah. you're actually quite shy, you know? Yeah. And like, if you and I are in a room, I'm going to be, you know, yapping away. Uh, yeah. and sometimes you won't say anything unless it's, you know, solicited. So I think it's well, a great opportunity for you to, you know, to, to do that yeah. and just share. And, and, and also, I mean, that's a part of the podcast. I mean, people don't know how I think, who I am. I mean, there are so many assumptions made about who I am. Well, oh, you're an Olympian, so you, uh, Olympic gold medalist, so you must be incredibly competitive. Well, I'm not, <laughs> I, I'm not competitive at all. I'm a performer. Um, and, you know, all of those things. Also, you know, when you were talking about uh, my lack of sharing, um, you know, verbally, I stuttered when I started, when I started school. So right. I didn't say a whole lot growing up. I mean, and I got very accustomed to allowing other people to speak for me. Right. And so this podcast is an opportunity for me to truly share myself and my thoughts and ideas. And I think it'll surprise a lot of people that I have some of the thoughts, ideas, beliefs <laughs> that I do have um, yeah. on, on, on many different topics. Um, also, the other thing, uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, when we started the quarantine and all, mm, yeah. I, I, 
I was suffering. I mean, I shared this with you that I was suffering deeply, deeply uh, with depression. Yeah. You know, and I was just so, uh, you know, I, I just didn't want to be here, you know, and, um, and so then by chance, I saw an interview with Dr. Daniel Amens, and he said that uh, he's a brain specialist. And he said that concussions can be accumulative. Right. And I had never heard, I'd never heard that before. And so that you know, pushed me into this path of healing. Right. And, um, you know, and, and also, you know, going kind of a more holistic route of my health and wellness. Yeah. Um, so it's just been an incredible journey. And I, well, in and learning, Greg, I have to say, because you're super inquisitive and I think that might be something else that would surprise people, you know, how much, because I think as we get older, the tendency is to kind of stop being that curious, mm -hmm. you know, um, not being as, uh, I don't know, introspective or just looking on the outside and like noticing things. I think that's another interesting aspect to you is that you learned this and you didn't just mm -hmm. say, okay, doc, treat me. You really got curious about it. Like, what does this mean? Uh, which right. like you just said, you know, is, is part of what you'll, you'll cover in the podcast, which I yeah. love. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and there's, uh, uh, on, on so many levels, you know, uh, um, and really looking at life, you know, very holistically, you know, it's your physical health, your mental health, um, so, your Greg, spiritual health. Okay. So on all three fronts here, you just added spiritual as I was like having this thought, right? Mm -hmm. So on all three yeah. of those fronts, your, your mental health, your physical health and your spiritual health, you have mentioned to me a number of times and very recently, even how much your, well, being a dog dad has helped yeah. you, yeah. you know, on all three of those fronts, I would say, right? Yeah, I mean, and animals, I, I'm more comfortable with animals than I am people, you know, um, I, you know, it, if, if I go to a social event, uh, you know, and I, uh, you know, I, I, stuff, I, I have social anxiety. And so uh, it was funny when I was uh, with my ex-husband, now ex-husband, you know, if, if he couldn't find me, he'd go to the host and say, do you have a pet? Do you have a dog? So, you know, and, and that's where he would find me. You know, oh, I would be with so the you. dog. Yeah, that's so perfect. You know, so if you if if you're looking for me, then you know, find the animals. Find the animals. <laughs> yeah, I. But um, yeah, the dogs are so important to me, and I think that a lot of people would be surprised how involved I've been. I mean, from when I had. Uh, my first breed was Great Danes and I had a Harlequin marked Great Dane. So in uh, co-owning this Great Dane, I had to show him in confirmation 10 times. And so that introduced me the world of dog showing. And so confirmation um, you know, is, is the, the prancing around the ring kind of thing, right? Right. It's okay. the best in show. It's, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's uh, Westminster. Mm -hmm. Of course. Kettle, Kettle yeah. Club. That's, that's the, you know, it's confirmation. Uh, and I got bored with that. I thought, I bet yeah, you did. And, 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 <laughs> and, and it was, it was so funny when I first started, it was like, the, um, I was taking uh, freeway, uh, who's like right behind me, mm -hmm. uh, that's freeway. And, um, I, I was taking him into the ring and one of the people ringside says, you're not taking your own dog in your, in the ring, are you? Because everybody had professional oh. handlers and it's like, of course I'm bringing my own dog. It's my dog. This is what we do, you know? And shame so, on you, um, you rule breaker. <laughs> yeah. So it, you know, it was, it was interesting. And, um, so got into that, but confirmation to me was boring. Um, you know, the, it was just so political and, all, you know, a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was more fascinated by performance. Um, I started competing in obedience and I had a little Jack Russell, which is Nipper, which is also behind me. 
And um, she she got her titles for May KC and obedience. You know, she went uh, companion dog to companion dog excellent. And then her utility dog, um, which is the highest obedience title you can get from AKC. Uh, she did all of that in eight and a half months. So she got a special award wow. uh, for doing it in such a short time. It usually takes people, you know, two to three years. Oh, wow. No, I know you said she was together. really brilliant yeah. and yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, and then while I was training, because you dogs don't generalize very easily. So you train in different locations, different environments. And so at one point we went to a park and they had dog agility <laughs> and they had all these jumps and tunnels. And I, I was just fascinated by it. And so you think, I, you think you, the, the guy diving from the 10 meter board spinning in the air and twirling and twisting and yeah. 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 <laughs> so it was, it, it, and, and, you know, Nipper, she was, she could do anything. You know, the, the only thing that held her back is her size. She was only like 11 inches tall from the shoulder. She was tiny. Um, but she was, she was fierce. Uh, so I learned a lot from that really got into dog agility. So, and you know, not only my health and wellness, uh, I, you know, I'm looking at my, my dog's health and wellness too. Yeah. You know, whether that be socialization, whether that be diet, whether that, you know, and exercise, um, if you're in dog agility, your dog is an athlete. I, yeah. So, I mean, I think if you have a dog, you should care about that personally, like, you know, they're family mm, members, right? Right. Right. You know, and that is, you know, uh, the longevity, uh, aspect of, of, you know, exercise, you know, is really important and vital. Um, and, you know, having, I, I've had so many different breeds of dogs too. <laughs> yeah. You know, I had Great Dane, Jack Russell Terrier, Border Terrier, Border Collie, uh, Portuguese Water Dog. Right now I have a Hungarian Pumi and a Pyrenean Shepherd. And so there's all of these different aspects of each breed, which I find fascinating. <laughs> um, and so, uh, and, and challenges, you yeah. know, all of those challenges, but also looking at a holistic approach of their health care and well being, um, as well as my own personal health care and well being. We've been working on this for a while, actually, the, mm -hmm. the whole podcast thing, like we visited it yeah. and then walked away and now have come back. And uh, I'm super excited that, well, first of all, I am excited that I, I get to actually uh, speak with you a little bit about the topics. That's yeah. very fun to me. Um, but I'm really excited that you're getting the opportunity to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, from your unique perspective, I, I think is very interesting because some of these topics, sure, other people talk about, they're just, they're not Greg, <laughs> right. you know, no, and, and it's, it's uh, interesting right. to me. Yeah. I mean, because, okay, one thing that kind of stands out is, um, you know, my view about, um, mm, I know what you're going to say about, about steroids and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And mm -hmm. also my views on, um, uh, transgender, uh, XY female competing in elite as, as elite athletes. You know, there's, uh, I think, um, a lot of people would be su surprised also. I mean, I am not your typical world record holder. I, I want to see my, my records broken. Right. You know, I'm, I, I, I I'm not Dr. Sammy Lee. I'm not you know, trying to protect uh, anything, you know? Just, well, I think I a lot of athletes do that, you know, yeah, sadly, because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. this is, but, this is your identity. But I, I think yeah. for you, it's like, it's, not. it's something I did and I enjoy new challenges and new experiences yeah. in life, you know, and I like yeah, to see other people succeed. It's a marker, but yes, you know, let's, let's break that, you know? Yeah. Um, 
also being adopted. Yes. You know, I, that, what, yes. what does that mean? Um, yeah. And, and that whole, um, you know, genealogy and like ancestry, right. you know, discovering the, that you did on that is, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a like, lot of layers to that. <laughs> right. You know, what, you know, what does it mean? I, you know, um, you know, I, I love the parents that raised me. Um, I was blessed with an incredible mother. Um, my father and I had a challenging relationship, which I think a lot of, especially gay men have, you know, might have with their, their fathers. Yeah. Um, but we I, were able I to suspect that was part of your, what pushed you to, to excellence, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, there's all of these things that I'm going to be able to, I feel like I'm going to be able to be able to share with, uh, you know, and, and have it reflect who I am, um, you know, because I, I, I wouldn't speak up for myself. Uh, I'm so glad you, you know, said very that. often. I'm so yeah, glad you I, said that. I was just going to say when we first, not when we first connected, but when we first started working together and I asked you, what it, yeah. what I ask everyone I work with and I start working with them, which was, what do you want? What are your mm. goals? Like, what do you want? Right. You know? Yeah. And I think that like, this is part of your journey. Like, yeah. well, I'm going to let you carry on with that one. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, because like, you know, I, I, I spent a week, you know, and um, not the week in meditation, but that, you know, like a week or two, you know, meditating, ruminating, um, of that thought and idea of what I want, because a lot of what was coming up for me, um, you know, uh, it, it wasn't what I wanted. I realized that a lot of what I was saying I wanted was to, because I thought it was what other people wanted to hear, to be the good little boy and and do the right thing and all that. It wasn't truly, you know, what I really wanted. And the thing right. that kept kept coming up in my meditation was dogs and health and wellness, you know, for both canine and human. And so that is that was like that's what was important yeah. to me. I love that you had the opportunity to do that. I mm -hmm. personally think that that is because when I ask people that question, a lot mm -hmm. of people have that response, not the meditation, mind you, some maybe meditate on it. Uh, but a lot of people have that response. So I think this, you know, this, um, peeling back the layers of, you know, who's Greg mm -hmm. and being able to share that and talk to just different people, you know, in the world that are in the spaces you're interested in is going to be really eye opening and, um, just interesting well, and enjoyable for your audience. Yeah. I mean, and also, I mean, I have had so many incredible experiences, um, theater you know theater i i, I mean a lot <laughs> of people don't yeah a lot of people don't know uh that you know that's what i went to school for that's what i trained for um you know my, uh, my degrees in drama minor in dance i started as a dancer a lot of people don't know that um and so uh yeah to share those experiences i mean being in musicals uh, doing a one man show in New York, you know, I went in for yeah. Dan Butler and that was whew, an incredible mountain to climb. I'll bet. Uh, and yeah. And, but you know, there's some really amazing, um, mountains I've climbed, you know, and to, and to share that and to share what I learned from a lot of those experiences, um, yeah. and sharing the experiences. Uh, I think that that is it because my life has been so diverse and I'm grateful. Um, also being a gay man that was diagnosed HIV positive back in 1988, you know, mm -hmm. I, I honestly 
did when I was diagnosed in 88, um, being HIV positive, what the thought was is you have two years to get your, your things together. I didn't expect to see 30. Like everybody in that position was told that I've only realized that recently, you know, reading some stories of other folks also HIV positive around the same time getting diagnosed. And also the, you know, the, the thing about that, I, you know, I didn't think I'd see 30 and then 30 goes by and then 40 goes by and I'm like going, crap, I got to get a job, (laughs) you know? I've got to pay my bills. You know, it's like, what am I going to do? I didn't, I didn't plan for this. Yeah. You know, and, and also, you know, also being 62. Yeah. You know, 63. Uh, now, I was going to correct I'm you, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that I'm 63, it's like, well, you know, what is uh, this midlife thing? You know, midlife crisis, what, you know, what, or is it a midlife awakening? Right. Yeah. There's a lot to unpack, Greg, I think. And, you know, often when we talk, me is kind of the, I guess, the lay person, right? I always say that like kind Mm -hmm. of the lay person, the average, whatever. There's a lot of your story that resonates with me. And I see how it resonates with, you know, your fans that follow on social Mm -hmm. media. Um, Just, you know, applying some of the things that have happened to you into everyday life for kind of the ordinary person, you know, yeah. there's a lot of, you know, a lot of synergy there, you know, an experience, even though they might yep. be in different, you know, circumstance on the outside, mm-hmm. the inside stuff is very similar, but Greg, yeah. you bringing up the whole HIV thing. I want to, I want to ask you something. So it's recorded for, for what's the word I'm looking for? Po- posterity? Posterity. Yes. Posterity. Recorded yeah. for posterity. You hit your head on the springboard mm. in the 1988 Olympics. Yeah. And fell into the pool. Did you bleed into the pool? Like all oh, those God. sensational yeah, articles. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. So that, <laughs> that, you know, and, you know, and, and I never corrected any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, even Barbara Walters, you know, it's like, are you blood in the pool? You yeah. Know, it's like, <laughs> no. It's like, I didn't, uh, I understand the drama, you know, that hot, you know, that hype. But when you get an injury like that, it doesn't bleed right away, mm-hmm. especially in a uh, environment where the adrenaline is, is up and things are, right. You know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, tense. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I that I didn't bleed in the pool. Okay, and, um, and obviously, I know that. I just wanted you to say that to everybody. Okay. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the one thing, uh, you know, because at that time, uh, HIV, there was so much fear surrounding HIV. Um, the only people that I put in harm's way really was the doctor who sewed me up because it's blood to blood contact. That's how, you know, transmission. Right. For, so, for the millennials, it would be like COVID and you just recklessly sneezed all over everybody around you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, there is that. And, um, and also you know, dogs, health, wellness, health and wellness, uh, you know, having, you know, the two concussions that I had, one was really, really bad. Uh, the other one was, you know, severe, but, you know, I, I, I was able to continue the competition in 88. Um, uh, you know, there's so many aspects, my theater, dance, uh, speaking, um, age, you know, I'm getting yeah. older. You know, it's like, what, what, what the hell do I do now? You yeah, know? I, I, I don't have kids. You know, and well, also, I mean, you do. You, know, you have fur babies. Yeah, yeah, but you know, when I see um, posts of a lot of my teammates and friends, and they have kids and yeah. they're growing up, and it's like, wow, you know, uh, Greg. Uh, you know, it, it's really cool. Yeah, it's cool, but I I will tell you as being one week into being an empty nester, yeah. there are a lot of moments that are 
difficult that, Mm -hmm. you know, that are very bittersweet, you know, empty nesters. So like, you're not going to trade that for anything. I would never trade any of it. Yeah. My kids know that even the really, really tough stuff wouldn't trade any of it because it served a purpose, but yeah, but yeah. 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 But anyway, all right. (laughs) Navigating life. Greg Luganus is alive. And uh, so, you know, join us on the podcast. Greg Luganus is alive. And uh, hit subscribe, like, don't miss an episode. It'll be an interesting journey. Yay, Networks.